by sports fans. Now, unless you're in your early 20s or not interested in Formula 1 racing, there's every possibility that you have heard of the late, great Ayrton Senna. Now, the reason I mention him today is because, well, why not? I'll tell you all about him, whether you know who he was or not. I am 32 years old now, and when Ayrton died, he was only 34. He was so he was so close in age to me right now. Um, he died in 1994, when I was only 13 years old. And I don't know how your childhood compares to mine, but I grew up every Sunday that the F1 racing was on. I would sit in front of the TV with my dad and watch it. Um, that was my, that was my childhood. So back in the days when Nigel Mansell was racing, and there's so many names which I know which have sort of faded away a little bit now. But if you mentioned them to me, I'd, I'd know immediately who they were. Um, Michael Schumacher was even racing back in Senna's day, and that was back in the days when Ferrari was so unreliable. Do, do you? Um, I mean, if you've been following F1 racing for years and years, you know what I mean. Um, they they wouldn't they couldn't even finish a race. It was it became kind of a joke, didn't it? The Ferraris were are they actually going to finish the race this time? Oh my God, they crashed out. <laughs> How unexpected was that? But. Um, Thankfully for Ferrari, they've improved a lot <laughs> since those days. Um, that was when Murray Walker was the commentator. I think he's retired quite recently, hasn't, hasn't he? But he he was commentating for decades, and like way before I was even born, he was probably the F1 commentator. And he had he always had a lot to say, didn't he? Martin Brundle, who was recently well, I'll say recently, <laughs> probably like the last fifteen years or something, he's been commentating on F1 alongside Murray. But um, back in the day, he was a racing driver as well, wasn't he? And those are the only names at the top of my head in, um, in the 80s and 90s when I was watching it with my dad. And when I grew up, I sort of lost interest <laughs> a bit in watching it. Um, but there was Michael Schumacher, Ian Senna, Martin Brundle. What was that other guy I just mentioned? Um, I've forgotten already. And a load of other people. I can't even remember off the top of my head. But... Um, as I said, if you said the names to me, I'd know immediately. I'd say, yes, he was a from racing driver in my childhood, back in the day. Um, and so, um, yeah, back to Ayrton Senna. Um, he won the World Championship three times. And I think the year he died, he had been doing a little bit worse, but he was probably hoping for a fourth, you know. And I think he could probably have done it as well. He died on the 1st of May 1994 at Imola in Italy. I was, as I said, I was 13, which is old enough, but it's too young to really grasp the gravity of what was happening. I, I mean, I was watching the racing that day with my dad, but um, I was too young to really completely understand what was going on when Ayrton crashed off the track. He was racing for Williams that year. And he was new on their team before he'd been racing with other people, and he was new to the Williams team that season, and he had been doing a little bit worse, you know. So he had something to prove to himself and to the team and to the whole world. I think he was out to prove that he still had what it takes, and I'm sure absolutely he did. But you know, <laughs> he just had to get in sync with the car and the team and everything to be perfect for him, for what he needed to do what he does, and just slaughter of everybody um so yeah he was out to prove something that so um he was leaving the race this um corner i've forgotten the name of it now they've changed the track now but um the, at the time the corner it was a curve and it was a fast curve it was the fastest curve in like in f1 racing in anywhere in the world it was it was the fastest you went into that corner flat out and you could coast around it and it was fine. The only way you would come off at that corner is if something went wrong. And unfortunately for Ayrton, something did go wrong that day with his car, something mechanical. Um, and he careered off the track straight into the wall, um, concrete wall, at 150 to 200 miles an hour. 
looking I've looked at the footage of the crash um on YouTube just recently and looking at it it, it looks like nothing you know you, you see drivers crash into walls all the time and they get up and they walk away and they're fine the car didn't roll over it um it didn't burst into flames it didn't fall apart you know there was nothing really dramatic that made you think oh my god he's dead he's totally dead but um it's just it was just an unfortunate um build up of circumstances for him that that made he, that meant he lost his life that day um the front my left and my right the wrong the right room the front right hand wheel on his car slammed into the wall first and it sheared off and it came and because there was the wall and the car you can't see what I'm doing with my hands there was the wall and there was the car and the wheel had nowhere to go when it came off so it came back over the car and it got him in the head so he had head trauma from that and there was a court case for years and years and it's only recently been resolved in like the last how recently the last six years, six years ago, something like that, which is pretty recent. Um, but for the team, you know, they were prosecuting, or perhaps not quite, the um, the Williams team for, for manslaughter because the mechanics, you know, the, the car, something went wrong with it that meant that resulted in his death that shouldn't have done, say they were at fault, so that's what the court case is all about. Um, but anyway, I'm probably getting distracted a little bit. Um, the, the wheel came came flying over the car and it and it hit him on the head and there was speculation that the steering column um, snapped causing the crash but I don't think that was the case I think what they figured out was um, the steering column broke because of the crash it wasn't actually what caused him to go careering off the track um, so um, when you know what speed he was going into that wall that sounds really brutal um, and then the tyre, that, that wheel that I say, the tyre, the whole wheel coming off it, like, and flying through the air at like 200 miles an hour, that's got to hurt. So, um, whatever else happened to cause, you know, the absolute specifics that happened to cause his death, apart from the, the wheel knocking his head about, um, I'm not exactly certain at this point, but, um, but you know the result. Um, and Michael Schumacher was racing right behind Ayrton Senna when he careered off the track. And I think when they eventually restarted that race, I think he went on to win it, didn't he? Michael Schumacher, but... Um, um, when the, the, the track stewards, marshals, waved the cars past the wreckage, but as soon as it became clear that Ayrton Senna was seriously injured they stopped the race because um, usually you know when drivers come off the track they're fine they think they're gonna get up out of the car straight away and they're walking around and then they're absolutely fine but but not that day um, he didn't get out of the car he couldn't get up so um, the doctors um, they got they stopped the race and they had the doctors and the paramedics and whatever it was in Italy they have they have the medical staff come over and they got him out of the car and I watched, um, apart from footage of the crash, also what was on that video that I watched was um, the doctor, um, he was a professor, the doctor, I guess that day, you know, the one that was there, helicopter didn't already at the track or whatever, he was he was there and he attended, he attended to it in Senna um, and he was saying um, sort of what happened, you know, he was saying they got there and they got him out of the car and he said he could tell from Ayrton Senna's um, eyes, I think, um, he had, his pupils were fully dilated. So he knew from that that his brainstem activity was sort of pretty much non-existent and the doctor knew from looking at him that that was it, this was going to be a um, fatal head injury. And what the doctor said in the video that I saw was um, they'd laid him out and he sort of looked him in there and Ed and Senna just sort of gave a sigh and then he relaxed and 
the doctor was thinking that like that's it. Um, he said he's not a spiritual man, but um, as soon as he saw that, he thought that's it. His spirit has departed. Um, so I think that's that's probably the moment when he died um, on the track side in Imola. Um, of course, officially, um, he died later in hospital. I think that's more to do with Italian law because um, he may have been brain dead, but his body was still do doing its best, you know, <laughs> sort of struggling by. Um, and they helicoptered him away to hospital. And I think they had him on life support, didn't they? Um, but he was essentially brain dead. He, he was gone, but it was, um, his body was still alive. And they kept him on life support for... I guess a short while, so later on they said he died in hospital, but I think um, even though his heart was still beating, he died on the track site in, 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 in Imola, there's too many eyes in those words, I can't get them out, he died on the track site. Um, and the real kicker is, is later on, um, after they'd, you know, he'd, they'd taken him away and everything, they restarted the race, and they didn't tell the other drivers until after the race had finished that Anne had died. That seems really horrible. I mean, I know if they were going to have the still, you know, the sort to have the race, um, it's better for the drivers to be able to focus on what they're doing. If you know, if they don't know beforehand that he's he's died, because that's such a tragedy. But um, it still sounds quite cruel to me <laughs> to restart the race um, without telling them that he's actually died. Although maybe things ran, like they took him away and then they restarted the race and while the race was sort of, you know, between the race restarting and it ending, um, he's, he sort of died in hospital. And that was why they didn't tell him until afterwards. But that just sounds quite exceptionally cruel, because he was such a great man. Um, fortunately, he is the la that was the last incident in which a formerly on racing driver died on the track. Um, and hopefully it'll be the last ever, because even though it's that sport is like one of the most dangerous <laughs> like ever in the world, it um, it has become a lot safer. They make it as safe as they can. Of course, you can't um, compensate. You can't compensate. You know, you can't um, sort of plan ahead for accidents. You know, just things that <laughs> happen, um, but they're not usually fatal anymore. Back in the days of um, Sterling Moss, um, he is another Formula One racing legend. Back in those days, like in the 50s, um, it was a lot more dangerous because um, they were doing the same sort of things, you know, um, the style of cars back then were different, of course, but they were going stupid fast because that's what Formula One is, it's just going so fast. And the crashes were a lot more fatal in those days. Um, but um, thankfully, He's the, he's the last Formula One racing driver to die on the track. So um, it's just a shame that he had to go out that way. I suppose in a way, perhaps you could hope that he wouldn't have had it any other way. Even though it is a tragedy, he died doing what he loved most. Um, I've heard, I've listened to videos of... Um, the other drivers talking about him and they all say he was the best in the world and he had a real um, instinct for for racing um, that's why he was so good and he was so brutal on the track he would force the other drivers um, into um, awkward positions you know um, I heard someone say it was possibly Martin, Martin Brundle um, he would put you in this position, like um, he was trying to pass you on a corner or whatever, and he would leave it up to up to you whether the two, the two actually collided or not. So, um, and if they did actually collide, next time Aunt Santa came up behind you, you were going to move out of the way because you knew the consequences. He was that crazy; he was just going to crash you off the course. So, um, um, he was very brutal, but he was so good. Um, there was one time, I think in the last year or two before he died, that he crashed his racing teammate off the track. <laughs> Just I think that was to win the championship. I heard that that he did that. I think he thought 
he wasn't going to win the race or there was, you know, some problem and, and so he crashed his teammate off the track so they were both out so that means his teammate couldn't win that race and possibly win the championship I think that's what it was all about he crashed his teammate off the track just so he could win the championship <laughs> it sounds insane I think that's the way it went so that's how crazy he was but um, there was also this one time where someone crashed um, on the track um, I guess it was pretty much in front of Ben Senna and um, the, the car was still sort of like in the middle of the track and Ben Senna stopped his car and he got out and he ran across the track to the other driver and all the world, he's, the other um, the other drivers in the races, their cars were sort of streaming past either side of this car that had crashed and he was risking his life to check that this driver was okay that might have been Villeneuve um, and he and the other driver said like when he opened his eyes the first thing he saw was Ayn Senna um, um, but that's just you know he risked his life to make sure that he was okay because he cares that much for you know about other people and he gave a lot to charity um, you know he helped people in his home country he was Brazilian um, but um, at the same time he was so brutal um, in order to win so he was it's sort of both of that he must have been a really nice man until you get next to him behind the wheel you never know what he's going to do he's unpredictable but he's really good and he he's in it to win it every time and it sounds like he was a bit of a nutter but he was so good he was the best racing driver next year it will be 20 years since he died that doesn't sound like very long at all same time for me it feels like forever because I was only a child at the time when he died. I don't know what sort of memories you have.